bloody battle for independence. A one-of-a-kind masterpiece. It really helps to define what it means to be a Texan. But a century later, a thousand miles away, what's this? It was very, very dirty. The edges were tattered. A Texas painting in West Virginia? Does that make sense? These things just don't happen. Did the legendary artist create another canvas, also worth a fortune? That was flabbergasted. We were all literally on the edge of our seats. I'm Jamie Colby here in Port Orange, Florida, just south of Daytona Beach. I'm here to meet a retiree who had a curious relic hidden among the rafters of her home in West Virginia. When her grandson finds it, he's convinced it's a valuable piece of history. My name is Betty Bland. For more than half a century, a strange inheritance collected dust in the attic. My husband and I thought it was worthless until our grandson John surprised us all. I'm John Buell. I knew my great-great-grandfather was a famous artist renowned for his epic murals of Texas battles. I had no idea I'd end up solving a mystery surrounding one of them. I meet Betty and John at the family home, where they explain that the benefactor in this strange inheritance tale is born in Belfast, Ireland in 1836. His name is Harry McArdle. As a child, Harry's a whiz with a paintbrush or sketch pad. Would we describe him as a prodigy? I mean, probably. He was a very prolific painter. As a teenager, he immigrates to America and attends the Maryland Institute of the Arts, where he creates this award-winning sketch of a failed royal coup. The level of detail that he got into this was really fantastic. The fine detail, the shading, so intricate. When civil war breaks out, McArdle puts his talents to use for General Robert E. Lee. He joined the Confederate Army, and he was a map maker. After the war, he moves to Texas, where he begins painting portraits of veterans. There, he becomes fascinated with heroes of an earlier war, the Texas fight for independence from Mexico. He had this vision to depict the exploits of the revolution, the heroes. Historian Sam Ratcliffe specializes in Texas battle paintings. What does McArdle mean to Texas? He was really the first artist to try to thoroughly research the sweep of the Texas Revolution. Why the Revolution? The Texas Revolution was the defining event of Texas history. The climactic event of the Texas Revolution and the subject of McArdle's greatest masterpiece is the Battle of San Jacinto. Let's set the scene. The year is 1836, when the ruthless Mexican general Santa Ana marches into Texas, then a province of Mexico, to put an end to a revolt by local settlers. The so-called Napoleon of the West crushes Texas forces at the Alamo. Santa Ana then pushes forward, determined to wipe out all the rebels. A battalion of volunteer Texas citizens, led by Sam Houston, are forced into retreat. They were up against an army that was larger with a European-trained officer corps that had wrought devastation, not just in Texas, but also against Mexican states that were rebelling elsewhere. On April 21st, Houston leads his ragtag group of troops, about 900 in all, on a surprise attack of the Mexican army, which is camped along the San Jacinto River. As they charge, the soldiers shout, remember the Alamo. It was revenge time for them. The bloody skirmish lasts just 18 minutes before Santa Ana surrenders. That was the day that Texas won its independence from Mexico. The American West was won. How many Texans were lost? Only nine. More than 40 years later in the 1880s, Harry McArdle makes it his artistic mission, not merely to depict the battle with painstaking accuracy, but to use his oils and canvas to tell a great story. He taught to maybe all the surviving veterans of San Jacinto. He did a lot of research on flags, on uniforms, and was just fanatical about getting the revolution commemorated properly. 
Harry takes more than a decade to complete his San Jacinto mural, finishing in 1898. And it's enormous, 14 feet long and 8 feet high. The troops clash in bloody hand-to-hand -hand combat. Dark clouds represent the suffering Texas has endured, while the setting sun breaks through the gloom, symbolic of the freedom the victory would bring. It's instantly lauded as a masterpiece and placed in the Texas Capitol Senate chamber. Curator Allie James gives me a close-up look. This is the Battle of San Jacinto. It's something that every Texan is proud of to this day. Who are the major players in this painting? First of all, of course, Sam Houston, despite the fact being gravely injured, insisted on being able to continue with the battle. You see one of his trusted scouts, Def Smith, charging forward yep. on his mighty horse. Behind Smith, a commander of Houston's spy squad, Henry Carnes, aims a pistol at a Mexican colonel. While General Edward Burleson is the first to charge the Mexican barricades. And then, of course, at the top, President Santa Ana was fleeing with uh, some mules kicking up their heels behind him. McArdle was saying that even Santa Ana's mules had lost respect for him. It really tells, I think, in one sweeping gesture, such an incredible story. It really helps to define what it means to be a Texan. So much so, the artist becomes a legend himself. How well known is Harry McArdle to Texans? It's absolutely amazing. In the Capitol alone, he has six pieces. Including this portrait of Stephen F. Austin, the father of Texas, and another gigantic mural titled Dawn at the Alamo that also hangs in the Senate chamber. McArdle must have done all these paintings because he was getting big bucks for them. No, exactly the opposite. The legislature would say, sure, you can hang him in the Capitol while we'll debate whether to appropriate money, and they never did. McArdle passes away in 1908 at age 72, with not much to his name besides his journals, research, and private artworks. He leaves those to his son, Ruskin. After Ruskin dies in 1955, Harry's grandson, George Bland, ships the items to the family home in Weston, West Virginia. And everything went to the third floor, and that's where it remained. And that was ultimately just more stuff from another relative and just kind of got packed away for later. That later comes 50 years later, when Betty's grandson, John, makes a shocking discovery in her attic. It was just kind of leaned against a wall underneath the tarp and very, very dirty. That's next. Here's our strange inheritance quiz question. Which Western legend did not fight at the Alamo? Daniel Boone, Davy Crockett, or Jim Bowie? The answer after the break. So, which of these three Western legends didn't fight at the Alamo? It's Daniel Boone. He fought in the French and Indian War and the American Revolution and died in 1820. The Battle of San Jacinto won Texas its independence and inspires Harry McArdle, whose famous painting still hangs in the Texas Senate chamber. McArdle becomes a Texas luminary in his own right. After he dies in 1908, his personal effects are passed down through the family, winding up in the West Virginia home of his grandson, George Bland, in the 1950s. His belongings all get stuffed in the attic, says George's wife, Betty. It was just a place that was a catch-all for things that you weren't using at the time. By the 1990s, the attic is packed with even more generations of stuff. It's a favorite playground for Betty and George's grandkids, especially young John. I mean, there was just so much stuff my whole time growing up. Every time I found something else and I come down, Grandma, Grandma, what is this? What is this? Where the heck did this come from? That curiosity in his family's history carries into adulthood. And in 2009, when John is 32, he's poking around the attic once again. He stumbles across something he's never noticed before. It was just kind of back in there, just kind of against the wall with a tarp over it. You have any idea what it was? No. I lifted up the, the tarp that was over it and, huh. Whatever it is, it hasn't been touched in decades, and it's quite large, at least five feet by seven feet. John's not sure how he missed it all these years. Turns out it's an old painting of some battle long ago. Can you describe it for me? 
There was a hole in the canvas. The edges were kind of tattered. It was very, very dirty. It was kind of a sad war painting, just stowed away in the attic for no one to see. John runs downstairs to see if his grandmother knows more about the intriguing mural. She said, your great-great-grandfather did that. <gasps> That's got to be worth something. Oh, no, it's not worth anything. That's just a working drawing. A lot of artists will do a working drawing to see how it's going to be before they do the final thing. And that's what my husband always thought it was. He said, oh, John, find something interesting, then come and tell me. He didn't even think it was interesting? He was not impressed. To him, it was nothing that was ever important. So they just didn't think there was any value to it. I think that just kind of permeated through the rest of the family. Nobody really, I don't know, paid it much mind. But John's not as blasé as his grandparents. After all, his great-great-grandfather's paintings are Texas treasures that have been hanging in the state capitol for a century. He figures, this thing's got to be worth something, right? I said, well, if, if we can do something with it, do you want me to? Oh, honey, whatever you want to do is fine, but nobody's going to be interested in that. John disagrees. He thinks it could be a nice little bump to his grandparents' retirement account, maybe more than a little one. My heart stopped. It was just one of the most pivotal moments in my life. That's next. Here's another quiz question for you. The Texas State Capitol, completed in 1888, is the largest Capitol building in America, second only to the U.S. Capitol. How did Texas pay for it? Mexican gold, longhorn cattle, or panhandle land? The answer when we return. So, how did Texas pay for its Capitol building? It's C. The builders were given 3 million acres in the Texas Panhandle as payment for their work. The estate became the largest cattle ranch in the world, nearly the size of Connecticut. In 2009, John Buell finds this dusty, slightly tattered painting in his grandparents' attic in West Virginia. He's told it's the work of his great-great-grandfather, Harry McArdle, an artist made famous by his murals of the Texas Revolution. I thought, oh, I bet we can sell this for about $20,000. I mean, he was a very accomplished artist. To find out, John emails Heritage Auctions in Dallas. I was very puzzled at first and very intrigued. Atlee Phillips is the director of Texas Art at Heritage. You had to be a little suspicious. Well, of course. I don't get a lot of inquiries about major historical paintings. But the painting in the photos looks legitimate. And John makes sure she knows he's a direct descendant of Texas legend Harry McArdle. What about the fact that it's in West Virginia? Does that make sense? That was one thing that was so perplexing. These things just don't happen. And if there were a five by seven foot mural painted by an artist as renowned as McArdle, there should be some record of it. After an exhaustive search, Atlee finds a small reference in a book by none other than Sam Ratcliffe, the Texas historian we met earlier. What did that notation say? It basically said another version of the Battle of San Jacinto painting was painted in 1901, location unknown. Unknown? Unknown. My heart stopped. It was just one of the most pivotal moments in my life. It's what anyone in the business is looking for, something that no one's ever seen before. Has John uncovered a second version of McArdle's famous mural that hangs in the Texas Capitol? The family sends the canvas to Dallas for authentication. What was your reaction when you looked at it for the first time? It was very different from the one that was in the Capitol. She immediately sees that the smaller version aims for a more heroic composition. The most celebrated moments of the battle all in one idealized moment. You see these most important, most mythic moments of the battle. And that's really very different than trying to accurately recreate it. There's Sam Houston, his horse shot from underneath him. And Def Smith dispatching a Mexican soldier, while Henry Carnes tussles with a colonel. And Edward Burleson leading the infantry. It was a whole new way of looking at the story of the battle. But if Heritage wants to sell the painting for big bucks, it must do a lot more to demonstrate it's indeed what it appears to be, 
a second mural of Harry McArdle's favorite subject painted by the master himself. There are a lot of really great reproductions that are being made now, so you have to always be very cautious. So Heritage performs infrared scans of the canvas to see what's underneath the top layer of paint. If you have something that's a forgery, generally it's a one-to-one -one copy. But when you're working on an original work, an artist often makes changes. Those changes will show up on a scan as ghost images, if the painting is in fact an original. Take a close look at the flagpole. When you look at the underpainting in the infrared, you see a ghost image of the flagpole that's actually at a different angle which means at some point when he was working on it, he looked at it and said, okay, that's not the right angle. So he paints over it and then moves the flags over and paints the one that you can see now. That's a way that you can tell that it wasn't just a copy. Atlee and other experts agree. The painting is the missing McArdle San Jacinto. What was your reaction? I nearly fell out of my chair. I was totally shocked. It was pretty astounding. It's the most important find in Texas art in 100 years. Now that it's determined to be the real thing, the family's eager to learn just how valuable it is. Unfortunately, all those years in the attic didn't do the masterpiece any favors. There were rips and some holes, and it was definitely filthy, dirty. Is it possible that a collector wouldn't buy it in its current condition? It's definitely possible. So of course we're very nervous. Nervously, Atlee gives the McArdle descendants her estimate, $100,000. She's worried the family will be disappointed. Instead, they're thrilled. Would 100,000 be nice? Money's always nice. Nobody thought it was gonna be anything, but when they came back, it's like, wow, okay, this is really neat. Sadly, as the family prepares for auction, John's grandfather, George Bland, passes away at age 92. How big a loss it is not to have your grandfather. That was pretty devastating for all of us. I bet George would have loved to see how much someone would actually pay for that dusty relic, which for half a century, he didn't think was worth anything. We were all sitting in the gallery, just couldn't believe it. That's next. What's your strange inheritance story? We'd love to tell it. Send me an email or go to our website, strangeinheritance.com. Now, back to Strange Inheritance. In November 2010, at Heritage Auctions in Dallas, Betty Bland is selling this mural of the Battle of San Jacinto, the decisive victory in Texas's fight for independence. We were all, I mean, literally on the edge of our seats. The first offer is higher than their original estimate, 115 grand. John doesn't know what to expect. The bidding started pretty briskly and then it kind of lulled and we were kind of like, oh, okay, well, I, I guess that's it. Suddenly two bidders go to war. The offer jumps to 150K. We were all sitting in the gallery, just couldn't believe it. A volley of bids follows, 180, 190, 200 grand. The next thing you know, the price is up to a quarter of a million bucks. Is it dizzying to be watching something like this go up? We all were leaning forward like, oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and it's going way more than we thought. 260, 270. At that point, I was starting to go, yeah, I think this is gonna be pretty big. When the hammer finally comes down, the painting fetches a whopping sum of $334,000. I was flabbergasted. My attorney said, Betty, just take the money and spend it all and have a good time. But first things first, the appreciative grandmother gives her grandson, John, a nice finder's fee. She bake you cookies or write you a check? She took care of me. It was more than she needed to. She definitely took care of me. For the buyers, proud Texans with a lifelong fascination with the Battle of San Jacinto, it's a chance to bring an important piece of Texas back home. After an extensive restoration, the new owners, Jamie and Kyle Stallings, loan the painting to the Public Policy Building in downtown Austin for all Texans to enjoy. This is it. And it really shows the most important moments of the battle, and it has created that myth of Texas. And it's not collecting dust in an attic anymore. Nope, amen. 
And thank goodness, in 2015, Betty's West Virginia home has an electrical fire, prompting her move to Florida. The damage is extensive, especially in the attic. It originated in the very spot where that painting sat for 50 years. If John had not pursued this, it would have been destroyed. It gives me cold chills when I think about it, really. An historic painting thought to have been lost forever is rediscovered by the artist's descendant in a West Virginia attic nearly a century later and is finally returned to the Lone Star State. How great a loss to Texas would it have been if it was destroyed? Oh my gosh, it is this really, really important piece of Texas history. I'm a sixth generation Texan and you do have a sense of, wow, this is my history. It's not just Texas history, it's my history. Harry McArdle never had much luck getting paid for his masterpieces. After McArdle's death in 1908, his son Ruskin fought tirelessly to get compensation for the legendary murals that his father had loaned to the Capitol. Finally, in 1927, the Texas legislature appropriated $25,000 to purchase the paintings. We can only imagine what they're worth today. I'm Jamie Colby. Thanks for watching Strange Inheritance. And remember, you can't take it with you. 